Hello everyone, welcome to the Eternal Spoiler Breakdown! My name is Pojo and we are live talking about Eternal Stormbreak, the next mini set coming out. Uh, I believe it's 22 new cards, gonna double check that real quick, make sure I got my information correct. But uh, yeah, it should be some 2021... Alright, 21 new Expedition Legal cards coming to Eternal on March 23rd. Tuesday in the Stormbreak Bundle. Pre-orders begin on Thursday, and uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting stuff. We got a couple of uh, new fancy cards coming up. Um, we are going to be reviewing each of the ones that have been spoiled so far, but uh, yeah, it uh, looks like we are continuing in the lore of Bastion. A giant storm is rising up from the Shadow Sea and threatening to overtake Topol or uh, otherwise destroy this towering city that is the final remnants of humanity. So pretty exciting lore stuff. Definitely excited to see if more stuff happens uh, in that particular set. Uh, as you can see, awesome, awesome art. And uh, with that, let's get into our very, very first spoiler, uh, Gentleman June de Angelo. <clears throat> Okay, so the Anglo are the Stone Scar faction and the Stone Scar House of Bastion. Uh, so this character is probably the leader of that house. Uh, he's a five cost four four with quick draw and summon. Each player chooses two cards in their hand to keep and puts the rest into their market. He is both a giant and a rogue, which uh, I guess it makes sense if you're looking at like sort of a thuggish type of uh, Stone Scar, like you know general like criminal element. Then uh, why not have a giant as your leader? Very very into it. Uh, so yeah. 4-4 four, four, quick draw, summon each player, chooses two cards in their hand. So that means that it allows you to discard down to two, but you do of course get to pick which cards uh, you are not keeping. If you're playing a relatively aggressive Stone Scar list, this is a pretty decent mid-range hit. Uh, basically, you hit it at five after playing a bunch of your own cards. You probably don't discard anything, and your opponent, if they are playing any sort of spell-based deck, have to pick a couple of different answers and just keep those ones. Uh, that means they aren't going to be able to uh, maximize their power issues, they aren't, or maximize their power. They aren't going to be able to hold huge hands of spells against you. If they haven't established a lot of tempo, they're going to have a much harder time establishing tempo as a result. Uh, it is a minor effect in terms of discard because A, if it comes down late, it probably doesn't do anything at all, and B, the choosing ability means that many decks are going to be mostly unaffected by it in the first place because if they're trying to kill you, then they just get to keep whatever cards that they want. If they just need a particular answer to solve a problem like Harsh Rule, then again, keeping two cards, probably not too bad for stabilizing. Uh, there are ways that De Anglo can get you lots of card advantage, but I think that overall this card is a little bit more niche than he appears. Still, quick draw on a 4-4 is not a terrible thing to have. I think the stat line is, while mediocre, definitely not bad with the ability attached and with the extra option of forcing discards, this means that you manage to put a lot of pressure on your opponent pretty quickly in like some quicker like mid-range type developments. So yeah, it can be pretty interesting. Also it puts those cards into the market, which allows you to enable market-based strategies. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can sort of set that up. Um, I think that something like Break the Dam, if I'm not mistaken, does stuff along those lines. Let me, let me try to remember real quick what Break the Dam does. I'm not sure if I'm... Uh, that might just be an Amplify deal double damage. But yeah, doesn't discard the cards so they don't go into the void, which means that they are a little bit harder to access. If you want to get into your market, it typically has a higher cost than pulling something out of your void for void-based strategies, so that is definitely a pretty pretty real type of setup. Um, yeah, and it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, blow the dam, uh, discards random cards from your market to increase the damage, and it has double damage lifesteal. So if you're playing like a Stone Scar blow the dam deck, and you're just filling your hand with cards, this is a great way to put those cards into uh, that particular setup. So very, very good stuff. <clears throat> okay. That. No. Live alarms. All right. Uh, yes. So next up, we have Nakas Bastion Prophecy. When you play a spell or weapon directly on Nakas, amplify one to give Nakas plus one plus one. So anytime you play a spell or weapon on him, uh, you automatically get the ability to amplify as many times as you like to give Nakas an additional plus one plus one multiple times. So immediately, this makes a lot of fun stuff happen in, I believe, Ixtune colors, red, green, blue, um, which, uh, is it Ixtune? Oh man, I don't remember for sure. But yeah, in like red, green, blue colors, if you want to do Amplify Matters, this is a mage that triggers Amplify 
multiple times off of just about anything. Uh, if you want to trigger it off of something like a bottoms up, you should be able to target the card uh, directly on the cost and then pay amplifies on bottoms up. And then if you have power left over, amplify for the plus one plus one. So uh, by and large, not a terrible thing if you're playing like a lot of different amplify cards, but you also need some other spells or weapons to trigger amplify. In addition, the card also basically just plays really well with weapons and spells. Like if you're putting stuff on this card, it has an automatic way to ramp up and pay the extra and basically just use your tempo every turn. So pretty interesting option. Uh, definitely kind of a cool Rakano type setup. Notably not an Oni, which is a little unusual, just a mage. Uh, but I am curious to see if that might just be like a typo or something along those lines. Uh, clearly this could deserve the Oni tag and could be an Oni mage uh, if that was the thing to happen. In any case, uh, very, very cool card and plays really well sort of both in the early and late game due to the ability to have the weapons like do something interesting on top of it. I would say he's probably a little better more towards the late game due to the fact that you're wanting to play weapons and also get the Amplify, but uh, as an example of something like really weird to do with Nikos Bastion Prodigy, you can just slam a spiked helm on him and then Amplify as many times as you like to get all those plus one plus ones, which is uh, I think an effect that doesn't really exist right now, so that's a pretty interesting way to get a lot of permanent bonuses very, very quickly on a very, very fast Rakano card. So it could be very good in like a cheap like Rakano uh, weapons aggro deck. I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, Prosperity of the Reach. This one is definitely a little bit more up my alley, I suppose. Gain three health, draw a card. If there are 10 or more units in your void, put 10 of them at random into your deck to take an additional turn after this. Uh, ooh, so couple things about this one. This is a take an extra turn card that doesn't have a lot of uh, ways to sort of, hmm, what's, what's the phrase here? Most ways to take turns in Eternal have a lot of protection on them to prevent them from being repeated multiple times, such as, for example, the Voidbound ability. Uh, this one does not have that, and therefore notably could be responsible for some unusual infinite turn combos in the future. There is an obvious drawback that basically makes it very, very hard to do that, which is that you have to have 10 or more units in your Void in order to make it happen, and then after you are done, you no longer have 10 or more units in your Void. But the card also gains a little bit of health and replaces itself if you play it, so it's not an unreasonable thing to have in a very greedy time deck, and you don't necessarily have to like play for it uh, every single time. In addition, you can excavate the card, pull it out once you have a bunch of units into your void, and then play it to gain an extra turn. I think this might actually be kind of insanely powerful, especially in throne decks. Uh, this might be something that comes out on the 23rd and then is abruptly featured on the 26th, 27th, or 28th uh, during the Throne Open. This looks like something that you could actually build like a pretty crazy combo deck around and then do some pretty wild stuff with. I'm really surprised the card does not have Void Bound. I think it's kind of obvious that you actually want to be pulling this card out of your Void, but like that kind of recursion is really interesting. So this one looks uh, surprisingly dangerous. Direwolf's designs are usually a lot safer than this, and this is uh, something that could be potentially like a lot more ridiculous. Uh, it's obviously more of a Xenon card if you're using like Spore Folk and stuff to discard cards from your deck, if you're playing a really unit-heavy deck. Uh, you need the deck to be both unit-heavy and to be able to recur Prosperity of the Reach to get it to com be completely out of control, but taking an additional turn is also just a very, very powerful effect, and having it on a card that doesn't cost you a lot of tempo if you're playing it is probably like and also redraws itself, is probably reasonable enough to have it in a couple of different decks. So look out for this one. This one's got uh, some real spike potential and could be kind of outrageous in addition to being a fun Johnny card. Um, so yeah, like really, really interesting in combo stuff. And if you're building around like lots of crazy nonsense, but potentially could just be outrageous. So uh, definitely one to, to be worried about. Okay. Okay, next up we have Shoal Custodian. Uh, this is a 4-3 with summon, put an enemy unit into the enemy player's hand, or deal one damage to the enemy player for each spell in their hand and increase their costs by one. So, 4-3 uh, for four, four, not an unreasonable aggro stat line. With the summon ability, you also get to bounce an enemy unit into the opponent's hand, which is, I think, currently the best version of this that exists. There is a 3-2 at 5 that does this, but like basically bouncing units is pretty difficult, and it's hard to get uh, cards that do this. I think there's an Elysian 
Elysian card that does the same thing, but to the market, which is also quite strong. Um, uh, the Elysian card, I think, returns it. It's like an Oblivion Ring on a stick. But basically, like, when you're getting this kind of, like, temporary tempo combined with a reasonably aggressive body, you can do some pretty interesting things with it. Uh, that being said, 3 health is pretty easy to remove, so it's not necessarily going to do a lot there. Uh, on the other hand, like if you're just reviewing it as like an aggro card that does that, I think it's definitely a re reasonably strong choice, but it also has a second mode that punishes players for playing too many spells and deals a lot of direct damage to the opponent uh, based on how many spells they have in their hand, which you're not going to know how much damage that is when you play it, but it also increases their cost by one, so it will put certain cards out of reach for your opponent if they're trying to reach for From the Heavens or harsh rule shoal custodian pops down and makes sure that they can't do that on the turn that they would like to which may just be the devastating tempo blow that you're looking for in aggro sentinels this is clearly a really strong choice it's got a really great first mode it's got a really great second mode and the two of them together make for a really balanced package on top of a relatively aggressive stat line that uh, while vulnerable to seers and the like uh, is nonetheless usually worth it on tempo due to the bounce and due to the just four attack on the card so yeah, this is a very strong choice for Expedition. It's probably going to be decent enough in Throne. You want cards that are mid-range that can be played down against Harsh Rule, and I think this is one that actually does the trick. All right, uh, that's all the normal spoilers that are showing up for today. Uh, those were the ones all showing up in the announcement. We'll be reviewing more spoilers as they come out. There are, of course, 21 cards to be spoiled, and uh, we will do a full review once the cards are all out and we've had a little bit of a chance to play with them. Uh, in addition, if you're pre-ordering, you'll get a fancy uh, extra card, a alt art version of Dark Return, which while Dark Return is a card with exceptionally sweet art uh this one's pretty cool as well and shows a really nice uh basically uh dead unit rising from the shadow sea which uh very very flavorful to bastion uh the art on all five of these cards incidentally just seems to rule like all of them just seem like they're really really on point and like with the Stormbreak art as well i'm really hoping that the, that tradition continues because like yeah all of these cards are looking like really well drawn and really well designed uh and like everything here looks really really fun to play with so i'm excited for these cards uh, already our first set of spoilers has not really had any duds in it it's got a couple cards that might be pretty dangerous but dangerous cards are fun to play with so uh if you're interested in pre-ordering that comes up on thursday and of course the whole set is out on the 20 first 23rd i already forgot uh the 23rd a uh, tuesday so uh thanks so much for watching we will be reviewing more of these cards very soon we also have some brews that are planned that uh i swear we will get edited so <laughs> they will they will be coming out very soon and we'll be talking a little bit about expedition stuff all right thanks so much for watching oh actually we have a throne brew as well so yeah uh stay tuned subscribe for that thanks so much for watching have a lovely evening cheers